Hello everyone. So today we are going to work on this portal play, placing part on the wall by shooting the portal gun. So here as you can see when I left click uh, a blue portal appears on the place I hit. When I right click the orange portal appears. So I can just jump from any portal I want and exit from the other one. See enter from blue exit from orange so, so let me place one here and shoot another one over there now jump from this see just like in the game portal So things are working. Okay, so let's see how to do these things today. And before I get started with the tutorial, I'd like to remind you that uh, all the project files of the two projects that I have worked on this channel so far, there are over 1600 videos up to date. You can access the project files of all of them for the membership of the patron club without a limit so feel free to check it out and that would greatly help me to continue what i'm doing and without further ado let's get started with the tutorial okay so so far this is what we have implemented we can see the portals and the other portal is over here if i enter from this one we exit from the other one like this so if I enter from here, I exit from this one. So that's what we have already worked on. And the next step is just like in the portal game, I should be able to shoot on a wall and place the portal there. When I left click, I should place a blue portal and when I right click and shoot, I should place a uh, orange portal okay so how do we get started let me open this rifle blueprint I just need to look at the logic where we oh, here we have uh, I just need to look at the logic where we shoot so here we have add BP weapon component so this is the place the shooting logic is implemented uh, now how do I open the blueprint of this thing mm. here weapon component so here we have IS shoot so this is an enhanced input uh, in is defined here and actions so IS shoot I'll rename this I shoot L because that is bound for left click and, and I'll duplicate the same thing and call it I shoot R. Now in here under mappings I'll add I shoot L is already here. I'll add R2 and assign right mouse button. To this like this uh, gamepad trigger also there uh, I have actually connected the gamepad already so if I just click oh this is also right trigger so it should be left trigger usually when we for shooting we assign right trigger but in this case this should be left this should be right okay now this is the logic where we spawn this uh, projectile but here I don't think I need to go with the projectile uh, I might just do some line trace so anyway let me just 
collapse all this part into a macro because we still have some stuff that we can use to do the line trace for example this the start location and the rotation so right click collapse to macro shoot from right now inside here let me move aside this projectile i'm not going to do that and instead of that let me get some space no from this side perhaps I do a line press by channel and I'll connect it here like this. Now, a starting point is uh, projectile offset, socket location, okay, this one, this point, and the end point is we have this rotation from this rotation we can get forward vector uh, and then we can multiply this by let's say fifty thousand units and if I add this value uh, if I add this value to the start point we will get a point stuff, uh, that is this 50,000 units away in the direction of this forward vector so essentially this will give us the end point of the line trace that we need to make to test this let me add a debug type for now I'll use the trace channel visibility but later on i'm not planning to uh, allow player to place portals everywhere it should be only on specific surfaces so we might need to implement a different channel but for now i'll just use visibility channel so let's just see if the trace works i don't see the trace why okay I'll make this duration so now we should be able to see yeah see now we see the point okay it would be nice to have a reticle but in this case we don't have a reticle but that's fine okay now uh, now based on this hit event we need a way to uh, place the portals so first let me open the portal blueprint and here i'll add a custom event place portal and we need a parameter to say which portal because we have two uh, i'll add a parameter blue orange blue or orange so then uh, these are the roots of the um, portals portal doors set actor sorry these are not actors Hit word location and rotation now this location and rotation should come as parameters this is the new location that we need to place the portal and the target this should be this could be either d1 or d2 so we have to select that like this if this is blue sorry 
here if this is blue uh, first one is first one is orange so I'll change this orange or blue to be more consistent so if this is true d1 if this is false d2 right now when we shoot when we hit a wall with the line trace all we need to do is just call in this custom event now for that we need a reference to the portal blueprint inside this weapon component so in the weapon component oh here we only added left shot but here get actor of class and I choose pp portal and promote this to a variable portal now here uh, in here also we need a parameter because we want to implement I shoot L and I shoot R. Oh, not that one. I shoot R. I A shoot R. This one. Also, we need to shoot the gun, but we need to say are we shoot in a blue portal or orange portal? so here also i'll add an input orange or blue now how do we where do we need it when we call that event so where to call the event Here, I'll add a sequence and then add a branch. If this branch is true, that means if we hit something, then we need to get the portal. I'll convert this to a validated gate just in case we don't have a valid reference, we will not get any errors. And then we need to call place portal. So is it blue or orange? Coming from here. Now it's a long line. Left shooting is for blue. So I'll leave it false. Right button shoot is orange. So I'll make it true. And then now we need to give the location. So how do we get the location? From here, we can break. And then mm -hmm. uh, this is the hit location. But I think if I give this location, that might cause overlap issues because this might end up in the exact same position as the wall. So I think it would be better if I just add the impact at this normal to this. We might, uh, we will push in a bit outward the portal door from the wall so we will not get any z fighting and the normal uh, rotation we can calculate from the normal get uh, no, rotation from x vector 
Okay. I think that's all we have to. Let's see. Yeah, see. Now we can enter from here and exit from there. It's working. Okay. Now we have one problem. So these are thick walls and they also have this back face as well. So the problem is if I place a, a portal here, now you see, let me place another one here. So see, we see the back of the wall. That means this is what we see so we should only allow placing portals on the locations that we have designed to have portals otherwise we will run into problems so that's why i initially said we should only allow portals in certain surface types i will come to that but before that should we make this a bit more interesting like uh, like this Set relative scale. To maybe not zero, something smaller. Like this. And then, after placing it, we can call again. We can enlarge it. Let's send this small component to. So we don't really need to move it. We only need to. Oh, here we don't have the scale part. So. We can add a timeline. Scale up. Okay, from start and add a flow track. Scale. Um, length I'll make it 0.3 add a key at 0 make it 0.1 and at the end 0.3 I'll make the value 1 so Alright, now here we again need a reference set relative scale. With the scale, I should enlarge. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically working so for now i don't have a bullet or any fireball or anything that is going from the gun mm. so let me quickly create a material m bullet uh, or time bullet i'll make 
this uh, maybe not translucent opaque uh, sorry yeah opaque is fine no i'll make it translucent and only it now let's define a color should have some pattern so uh, let's add a noise okay and multiply this with the noise okay it's too small so let's say this scale yeah this is better what if I add another multiplier? No, again, increase directly. Right, and position absolute position. It means that uh, this. So, also, I'll add some variable thing. For example time so we have some variation on the surface see uh, capacity should I connect yeah this is better maybe I'll reduce this Now, uh, if I had a multiplier here, things would go faster, like this. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to separate the color and emissiveness to another parameter. zero something like this okay now we need some object like a bowl in here why is this So, uh, I'll create an actor called BP Portal Polar. So this, so now that we have actor, you can add anything, maybe a particle effect, a trail, anything. I'll just add a sphere. For the bullet uh, let's see how large this thing is too much so definitely we need to scale it down no. yeah. should be large enough and i'll assign this material Okay, and I'll create an instance and for inst and turn this into range. This is for the other bottle. Oh, it's a different color. 
Ada set kepala. Now, oh, we need another child actor. Here, I'll assign the other color. Uh, one more thing, while I'm at this, in here, for the frame color, instead of just giving a color, I'll add the same effect which are implemented here this part emission to see now it looks better not exactly as in the world game but it's somewhat looks better Now for the bullet in in the weapon component we need some space again I'll add a function get get bullet and here as an input I'll give orange or blue so here I'll spawn actor from class and the class should be selected based on this so if it is True BP portal bullet orange, otherwise, BP portal bullet, which is the blue one. And I think it would be better if I just keep them promoted to a variable rather than keep spawning. Uh, no, maybe let's just destroy it once it's used. Uh, so we can return this why do we complicate at this initial stage mm -hmm. always spawn no collisions uh, it will be spawned in the zero zero location and then once we return it i'll change this to uh, PO function so that we can just use it without connecting an execution line here get bullet and from the bullet get move get root component So I'm going to move it. Set at uh, location. 
Location is this location. The starting location of the line trace. Which we already have here. Trace start. And then get the root component. And root component. The target location. That means this impact location. Rotation could remain zero over point two time. Oh, hold on. If I do it like this, I will get two bullets. So I think I should promote this to a variable first. Bullet. Then use that. And at the end, we need to destroy it because before we spawn the portal, we need to destroy it. So, destroy actor. Also, I don't think we need the line trace anymore because we have a bullet now. Let's test. Yeah. Nice. I'll make this much faster. And MC must a lot higher. Yeah, I see the bullet. Set the time to 0.1 and it's in an alert. Now it looks like this. Let's see. Better. Okay. That's good. Now, uh, um, I think it's a good spot to spot a stop this tutorial. So we will continue with the rest of the system where we distinguish the worlds that we can place and we cannot place, and also uh, positions. For example, a portal should not appear like this. It should appear below that. So things like that we will look into and also other improvements in upcoming episodes so thanks for watching as always updated project files will be available here for the download in patreon page see you in another episode goodbye